Buckle up. And welcome to Musicians and Beyond, where we bring you the backstage info on the life, lyrics, and long journeys of the music industry. Today, we are dedicating episode number 21 to the legacy of Loretta Lynn and recognize all she's done for women in music. She was uh, really quite a woman. Phenomenal. Yeah, uh, unbelievable. I mean, we've been cranking out the the episodes, Mark. We're on episode 21, and we have an incredible guest. We're very fortunate to have the guest that we have on yeah, tonight. Yeah, very fortunate. I, I, I'm very excited for it. Episode 20, the uh, last one, she drove here an hour and a half to come into the studio, and then she went home and finished packing her car with her family to move to Nashville. And her name is Paige Davis. I think our guest might know who she is. But you know something about Paige? She's someone, she's wicked good. I was surprised she had a license. I yeah. thought she was too young to have a license. Yeah, no, great and kid. And then I learned she can drink, too. Yeah, great kid. She can drink, good talents, everything. Um, she's someone that should, like, audition for The Voice. Oh, she should definitely. She's got all the talent. She's got all the uh, the, the poise. She's got the spunk, everything about her. You, you know something? Have you been watching The Voice? I have. I've got yeah. yeah. I'll tell you. There was a girl. Did you see the very first one? I did. Dude, she rocked. She yeah. came out. She sang this hallelujah. Within four seconds, I think, uh, Camilla turned for her. It was, and, and it was unbelievable. Bang, bang, bang. Four, four cheers. Oh. Just like that. Yeah. Unbelievable. Let me, hold on. Hold on. I'm just Googling something. Yeah, it was Morgan Miles. Imagine if we could Morgan get her. Morgan Miles. Yeah. I think she's from Nashville. Do you think we could ever get her on the show? It'd be worth a try, right? Let's try. Well, Reach you know something? It. Let's do it now. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome from Nashville, Tennessee, Miss Morgan Miles. Hi, guys. How'd you like that introduction? I love it. And (laughs) hey, I love Paige, and I'm so excited to welcome her to Nashville. We actually talked about it not too long ago at a show um, where I was playing in, I think, New Hampshire. But um, I'm so excited for her. She's going to do some great things. Yeah, I'm so sad about Loretta Lynn's passing, um, but at the same time, it's like, oh my gosh, what a legacy she has left behind. I mean, you couldn't ask for anything more. It's just, wow. Yeah, it's unbelievable. She really like paved the way for women in music. Yeah, very strong, determined. Another one that showed no hesitation about blasting through that ceiling, you know, and, and yeah. so happy to have her set that path and, and so many women followed her. What a history, what a legacy, and what a, what a way to show women how, how to take control and go after what they want. Yeah, and not take no for an answer. Yeah. And just stick to your guns in a really just male-dominated industry. And she, uh, there's no one like Loretta Lynn, and there never will be. No, you are correct there, and I think she's going to be missed by a tremendous amount of people. You know, I, I saw someone today and made a statement that, you know, all the accolades that are used for, for different stars of today's uh, genre and, and music industry, they, they're overly used. And um, and then he said, but in the case of Loretta Lynn, not at all. Loretta Lynn just absolutely set the standard. And uh, for, and for women like you in the industry, and you, you have shown no hesitation at going after what you want. Good for you. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's not been an easy road, that's for sure. I put 17 years in Nashville alone, and um, it's been, so, it's not, it's been, it's been an uphill battle, that's for sure. And um, country's not the most uh, easy when it comes to female on radio. And so, you know, it's definitely been at least a decade battle as far as radio with females. So, um, you know, hopefully we can eventually get to a place that, like, I mean, I remember back in, like, the 90s and the early 2000s, I mean, females were definitely dominating in such an amazing way i mean shania twain continues to hold this like like all-time records of like i think all genres or something crazy for like the highest grossing artists of like all time or something crazy i don't even know but like you know what would country music be without the dolly partons and the rivas and the loretta's and the patsy Cline's? and you know i mean it's just sad that um it's just a little bit harder on the females. I can say that. I think we can all agree. Yeah, but, we can uh, definitely agree on that. We can look at these women that continue as examples, and they didn't take no for an answer, and that's where we have to 
continue to look. I mean, we absolutely love what we do and that's what's most important and we want to reach people. And at the end of the day, if we're reaching one, <laughs> then that's all we needed to do that night. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Right. When when John and I first started doing this and you 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 said something that that strikes to me that our whole goal was to give a platform to people that you don't hear on the radio because the radio, I don't like the way the radio dictates what we hear. So I like to go out and we like to hear different music and we like to hear from people that, that the radio seems to be shunning away from or not, not finding. And it, they're not hard to find. They're there. Play more. Get more people on the radio. Yeah. And, and in your case, I, I think you say it strongly enough, more women should be heard and they should have a greater platform and a great, greater role and yeah. acceptance in the industry. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I I could list so many people that I just know that are so amazing in this town. I mean, they're just, it's, and you know what? I, I always say this, it's such a detriment to just the quality of music when we're not hearing the best. And, and the there, it's not a lack of trying. It's not a lack of uh, hard work. I mean, it's just sucks because I just have so many people I could name that I'm just like, oh, you know, and they're just not getting that recognition. And, you know, I mean, which brings me back to like why I felt like I really needed to go try something that wasn't my norm. I've never tried out for a competition show like this. So going to The Voice was really just trying to get that exposure to like have the most important to me, you know, tell me what how they feel, which is the listener, the supporters, the fans, the, you know, and I kind of wanted to skip that middle ground of letting, you know, maybe the politics of the industry, you know, decide. I wanted to go on and see like what truly the true reaction because I would go and play. I mean, I played 117 shows last year. Wow. I mean, granted they were solo acoustic because of the pandemic, but like this, the, you know, like the typical statement over the past, you know, probably solid six years of being on the road constantly. That's how I made most of my income. You know, them saying, you know, I just don't understand why we're not hearing you on the radio or like, how are you not famous yet? Those used to be endearing. They became very bittersweet because you're like, you know what? I don't know what. I'll great, great video. Thank you for showing me that. But uh, I just had to throw that in there because I was thinking across your Instagram and, and, and seeing you the other night with, with the fellow competitors on, on yours talking about miles across America. Um, tell us about that and what you hope to get out of it or what you want the audience to, to share in. Yeah, you guys do need to follow my Instagram so that I can give you some good Chef Morgan recipe. Okay. <laughs> you use lemon and everything. Now. A little lemon and everything. I know, a little, yes. Yeah. Oh. I mean, that that's fine. Oh, yeah. I, Mark and I were talking about putting together, because we do have, you know, 23 countries that listen to us. We were, real, like, for real, thinking of putting together a party and inviting everybody. When I say everybody, everybody's invited and we're gonna have a watch party have a watch party um if you want to enter the watch party um basically this will go until we want to see how excited you are like and get be creative or whatever but you know tag me or just that way i can know it's happening and then um you might end up on mvc which is fun um uh, Whoever I think has the best watch party at the end of this thing, um, I will come and play a free concert at your house. Wow. Mark, we're gonna ha sometime. we are gonna have to win this. I I, I mean Mark And I have to say this. I might make it multiple house stops because I wanna say I just want everyone to know that it matters to me the most of my milestones and how much the support is what keeps me going so if i'm on the road and you know the routing makes sense and it's more like a monday or tuesday when concerts don't typically happen let's stop and let's let's just have a cool grill out and i'll play like for y'all and you can hopefully my band's with me or something like that but that is uh what's up for stakes so i just want to see y'all get involved and let's get excited and Hopefully, yeah. if I make it to the lives, y'all start voting, and um, that's when I, you know, I'm really going to need you if I make it there. Uh, fingers crossed. Yeah. But I want everybody to have fun. I want. Yeah. I just want to see what's going on. So well, we yeah. are rooting from. Uh, we are rooting for you. Absolutely. Thank you. And we, we can't wait to see your journey. We're going to be sitting back, watching what's going on the entire and way. We can't thank you enough 
for coming on. We want to remind our uh, listeners that if you want to find out about Morgan, uh, morganmileslive.com, and it's miles, M-Y-L-E-S, live.com. Um, you can download any of her music. You can buy CDs. You can buy all kinds of swag. Buy a streamer song, streamer music, follower. Everybody. Make sure you're paying attention and, to what this young lady does here. all of our listeners, this is a formal invite. You are all personally invited to our watch party to see Morgan Miles. Hey, let me ask Thank you. Thank you so much. Morgan, do you have a charity that you like to work with? Um, is there any charities that, that you, you put your heart out there for? And your name on? Um, it used to be ALS Tennessee um, because I nannied for a woman that passed away of ALS. Um, and I became pretty much like a mother-like figure to her two kids for about a solid eight years. Um, they're doing really well now. Cats in, cats in college and Will is now in high school. So they're, they're doing well. Um, but that was, I was pretty heavily involved in that because while she was dying, we, we really needed a lot of their support. Um, so that's a big one. And also, um, my cousin who passed away of cancer, glioblastoma, he was, um, in a lot of trials for at Dana Farber and there's, um, there's actually a charity under Mac's name, Mac DeClue mm -hmm. for Dana Farmer. I'll give you guys a link that maybe you can link it gotcha. in there. Yep, and absolutely. all that money in his honor continues to go to research for Glio. So that's probably my biggest one at this point. Excellent. Wow. Yeah, and you've done some um, make-a-wish work in the, in the past with a local jewelry company. Picking up the way that I thought naturally they should pick up um, and... I was a little afraid. I was really in my head again about making sure that when I released music, it was original music and it was me as an artist, not a singer. And I think now I'm in a very confident place in my life that it's like, I wanna make sure that like, even if I'm singing a cover, I'm still coming at it from a very genuine place as an artist. And I think what was great about the judges, they kept saying how they saw the artist, like, and it was so artistic and they could really see me as an artist. So it wasn't just like, man, she can sing. You know, right. I think that was my worry that I wouldn't be seen as somebody after the show as an artist. It was just like, you're a voice singer, you know, you're from the voice and she sings like I didn't want maybe that image. I was a little worried that that might not be the right way to go. I think the show, too, has shown how through the seasons, even people that have not made it to the end, even the finale, like a Morgan Wallen have absolutely taken off and it was a good platform. So you look back and you're like, wow. And the thing is still on NBC, I think it's still rated like their number one most viewed show. It's still a very coveted show. And so, you know, I think it was just timing is everything in, in general, I feel like with the industry as well. And I think it, I feel confident now with my story, where I'm at. I'm, I'm also okay and confident with being vulnerable. I'm okay with the things that have happened in my life. And I really want to connect with people. I want people to not feel alone. Um, I remember last year I had a, I'd been working with the booking agent and I thought my entire schedule for 2022 was completely booked out. I was actually doing really well opening for a pretty mega, mega artist. And they were actually, most of them were fraudulent contracts after killing myself oh. all of 2021, you know, and I was like, who rips off an independent artist killing herself on the road like this during the pandemic? Who right. does that? Not and, a nice person for sure. It's yeah. Perfect. And so here I was again, just like pretty distraught and this came through. I've been on like the casting thing for a long time. And um, I saw the email and it was really like, what do I have to lose? Why don't I just do, you know, send in the tapes, the audition tapes and go from there. And then if, if you know, I'll just keep taking it step by step. And if it feels like this is something I should do, then let's do it. Next thing I know, I'm in L.A. Like, wow, what am I doing? Awesome. Good for <laughs> you. Best and, step you've ever done, right? Yeah. It's a great platform. You're ready. You're ready to take off. Yeah. Morgan, you know, it, it, you talk about your journey and, and there's been a lot of really a lot of ups 
And there's been a few downs that have hit hard. You've yeah. run into management issues. You've run into some some booking agent issues. A, a bunch of things that have stolen some things from you. And and, and part of that is your vulnerability, right? You, you kind of shut off after, after something like that happens and you don't want to be taken advantage of again. You've been out there, as you say, 17 years in Nashville alone, running after your dream. If you had a couple of things to, to point out to a, what to look at as a younger musician, as a younger artist, what warning signs could you look back at and say, wow, I wish I paid more attention to that? Oh, guys, there's so much. I would write a novel on it. Uh, the thing is, I think what happens is, coming from, say, the artist side, is if if somebody's coming into this with bad intentions, they know what makes an artist tick. They, it's We're all here for the same reason. We have a dream. It's very easy to manipulate an artist and offer them the world and act like you know what they're, you know, you're talking about. And the expectations, they never lead up to it. Um, the hard thing is the artist is the product. And the, the way that I have been saying this, even to other contestants that's on The Voice right now, a lot of people, a lot of them are asking me a lot of questions. And the biggest thing I keep saying is, please, please ask around for their reputation and don't be afraid to ask a million questions and do not sign anything, you know, without an attorney, but don't like ask around, ask around. And if people don't know them, that's even a red flag. So you need to just do your homework. Like say they managed blah, blah, blah back in the day and they don't work together anymore, but why? Why didn't, what happened? Yeah. Um, I just think you have to really set out your expectations. I think artists are afraid to stick up for themselves even initially and ask those questions because they think maybe they'll lose the opportunity and they'll that person won't want to deal with you or there's always that oh she's unmanageable or she's too hard to work with or he's too hard to work with and listen if they want to be defensive and say that then that's not your person you know they try to make it if they try to make you feel that you aren't the captain of your ship you then that don't work with them because you are and you're the one at the end of the day that has to truly run the ship and don't let them feel anything less because if they're doing that they're down for their something's going down and it's it's just hard because the the more manipulative they are like it, it's hard i mean i really thought that i had gotten better with reading people and everything and i and i did my homework on definitely my past manager and man did he school me i mean it was bad and it is what it is you know but I'm not going to let him win. And, you know, I'm yeah. sure right now seeing 6.5 million views alone from a blind audition, he's probably kicking himself. And I hope he is because Absolutely. He, all he had to do was do his job. And, and if he's not kicking himself, give me a little while. I'll find him and I'll give him a little kick. Too. <laughs> There's a lot of people that want to yeah. do well, that. Well, that's, that's really too bad that you went through that. Really too bad. You know what? What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I love it. I <laughs> like, now, that's a, that's a great attitude, Mark. Absolutely. And, and, you know, one of the things that you, we don't know where this is going, obviously you can't say anything yet. And, and we're looking forward to watching this happen. There's a lot of great young artists on the show. There's a lot of great artists all around that, that have gone through so far. Um, and as we're watching it, I'm rooting, he's rooting. We're all rooting for Morgan Miles. And Thank I can, you. I can see just, you know, just what you just said a minute ago about how some of the younger talent and artists are coming to you and saying, Hey, listen, a couple questions. I watched Bobby Bones on American Idol. And I can see someday Morgan Miles on American Idol is the the, the, the one that's there as the mentor. And I'm, I'm sure you have so much to offer the industry-wide, everybody. And uh, I think they're all in for a treat. Oh, I love that. You know, so a lot of people come to me and it's absolutely, you got to pay it forward. That I don't want anybody to ever have to go through some of the things that I went through. So I, um, I love to help in any way that I can. Good. So... Um, yeah, I and I actually enjoy it because I'm like, the more that we can run the crooks out of the town faster, the better. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, I noticed something that, that's really cool. So this is a competition. This We're talking about The Voice. The Voice is a competition. But from what I see of you and your other contestants, it's more of a collaboration. You, you've made some friends. You guys have already done stuff on the outside, and, and you're actually rooting for each other, which is awesome. 
Honestly, it's really, we have come together. We've created community. I feel like we've all, unless you've been on the show and been through your experience, you can't really explain the emotions that you go through. Um, and, but yeah, I mean, we all love one another so deeply and we have so much respect for one another. It's not like some like cutthroat competition. Yeah, it's cutthroat from the eyes of the viewer, but like, we're all just feeling very honored and blessed to be a, you know, continuing on in the competition and having to meet everybody and everybody has such a beautiful talent and story in their own realm and right. And we, I think it would be such a loss if people treated it like, you know, just like, Oh, I'm, you know, I like with egos involved and I don't, it's not really like that. And it's actually been just such a really beautiful experience as far as the contestants go. Yeah. We've right. all become family. Yeah. It seems like you, you have friends for life. Yes. That's cool. Yeah. That's that's, oh, that's, for sure. That's awesome. That is awesome. Um, in the past, you've played with some really big names. You've been on stage with Reba McIntyre, Rick Springfield, one of my favorites from the eighties. I'm a big eighties guy. Okay. Hank Williams, Jr. I mean, you've yeah. like, been <laughs> you've done it all i mean this is really good how was pretty soon some younger version maybe Paige davis will say i get to play with morgan miles you know that'd be awesome right gosh man it'd be so great to finally to be to a place of headlining and and feeling like you can sell the place out like i think that's the other thing the pressure of ticket sales and but anyways it's a whole other conversation but um <laughs> it's such an honor to watch these huge artists, you know, when I'm like, I remember I was playing for a util, I was a utility artist on the road for the whole Reba tour in Canada, right after college. And Reba is the most down to earth person. What you see out there is exactly who she is. And I wasn't being treated very well at one point in this run. And it was a long run. It was like a month or two. And she came up to me and she's like, hey girl, you okay? And she didn't need to do that. You know, I'm I'm like 21 at this point. I'm homesick. I'm like, man, my the singer that I'm singing with, she just is not respecting me. And um, yeah, I was ready to go home. But like her entire band took me under their wing. And I remember from that day on, I was like, there's artists that will make it here. And then there's artists that make it here and remain at the top. And it's because of how they treat people. And I would never, ever go on stage treating my band a certain way and think that we're going to make a good show and good music when everybody's in turmoil, when you just set that negative energy. Right. I was like, I absolutely will follow Reba's mm. role because she is the epitome of how you should treat people. And um, I just think that's why she continues to soar and she will forever soar. And she's just a freaking good person. Awesome. <laughs> more, more words of wisdom from Morgan Miles. Right. For those young artists, there's another lesson right there. I mean, it's easy to see that what you can give back to these kids and I hope they're all absorbing. Now I sound like I'm a grandmother. Not no, at all. No. Not at all. Just no. someone, somebody that's that's been through it. Yes. And, I mean, she would be a great captain of the ship. 100%. You know, I think that's, captain that's awesome. Morgan. Captain, captain Morgan. Captain, ah, hey. No pun intended. Captain. Um, are you prepared to play any music by chance? You have to tell me these things so I have it right I, here. I might have. I might have. <laughs> Here's the thing we're at right now. We've we've talked a little bit about where you are right now on, on The Voice and, and how you got here just recently. Where did your musical journey begin? Well, I'm originally from Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Williamsport. And yeah, Williamsport, home of Little League Baseball. There we go. Um, I remember I start, my mom got a piano. There's nobody musical in our family, but she always wanted an upright piano. And I guess at five, I sat down or maybe younger than that. And I started playing and singing and she was like, I think that's like good. So she started taking lessons with me at five. And then I started picking up guitar. I was really into dance. And then my guitar teacher eventually, I mean, he really took me under his wing, taught me the blues. We were only three hours away from New York City. So, you know, I would get out of school and mom would drive me there just to do like demos and 
you know, do dance classes. I mean, they we really just we it was such a freaking journey just to even figure out like where do you begin? And so but we've been doing it since the beginning and then when it came time for college um, I looked at Berkeley College of Music. I looked at Belmont. And I looked at a couple other places, but I, I, I was sold on Berkeley. Went there for a year. First year. Next thing I know, Sony Nashville's got my, the A and R's got me going back and forth. And then they said, in order to continue working with you, we need you to move to Nashville. So I transferred to Belmont and did the business school there, music business. Yeah, excellent. Then I ended up interning for a couple labels in town including big machine so i was interning for taylor swift at that point like uh -huh. met her a couple times um when she was just honestly first getting started like the first two albums and um yeah which led me to graduating and it, like the next day i ended up uh going on that reba tour playing for another artist so yeah it's just been wild i have stories for days oh, and, but sure. it all began in williamsport pennsylvania <laughs> wow that's cool yeah our episode 13 um guest mike valeris is a professor at belmont university um oh, he, cool. he's, yeah. he's from cool. the new england area originally and he's married to jc don uh, J.C. Don Valaris and, uh, and and Mike is probably one of the most talented guitarists, and and that's what he teaches guitar. And it's interesting through that I, we learned that one of the things that you, you don't know that the big stars, people that that are really at the top of their craft, still go back for lessons. And Mike is not only teaching students at Belmont; he has his private clients that he sits and goes through. You know the guitar. You know, let's try something new. And it's interesting to hear that that even at the height of your career, you're still going back and trying to do lessons with somebody to, to hone your craft a little bit further. I mean, like the saying goes, you will always be learning. And if you think you know it all, then that's honestly a problem because you're, you're forever, a, you're a human being. Like we should always be trying to better our crafts, better ourselves and always in a state of learning. Mm -hmm. You can always learn. Like, I know I need to get better at, like, I I wish I had time to do more guitar, like, lessons. And, you know, I wish I had time to even do more, like, vocal warm-up lessons just to really know to take care of your instrument yeah. and stuff because we get so tired. So, yeah, I mean, I think learning is so important for everyone. I mean, it's important for our minds, too, to stay healthy and just, you know, keep pushing it. So, Morgan, for any of our listeners all over, actually, we've been streamed in, was it, 23 or 24 countries? Right around there. Yeah, we're, we're, we're making Not wow, the globe yet, but around. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy. 24 countries. One of our guests was from Uganda, which was kind of interesting. He was a uh, jungle musician that made his own instruments from the, uh, uh, the, the land. Indigenous trees. And, and, yeah, yeah, it was really, it was, it was wow. interesting, interesting conversation. Um. So where was I going with this, Mark? <laughs> well, this is where your career really took off. You thought it was The Voice, but it's the 24 countries that are listening oh, yes. around the world to musicians and beyond. That's that's where you were going. That's it. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. <laughs> no, I totally lost my... I think it was The Whistle Pig. It, it could have been The Whistle Pig. So we, we, or The Whiskey. The, or well, The Whiskey. The Whiskey was The Whistle Pig. That we, was were, the we were Whiskey Dreaming. Oh, we were yes. Whiskey Dreaming a little while ago uh, about this show. I love it. Yeah, Whiskey uh, Wait, Whistle what's Pig. What's Whistle Pig? Whistle Pig it's, is the brand. It's yeah. actually pretty good. I think we had the eight-year bourbon. Oh, my gosh. You can have is to that try a, that. What, how much does that cost for, like, a shot? It was, Where we 20, were, it was $24 expensive. <laughs> for one drink, but that's that's. Oh, awesome. my God. Yes, yes. That's, but, you know. That's, Only the best for John. That's it. But, well, that's what I say. I like to say that. I bet it was smooth, though. I like, okay, so here's a little funny thing about, like, Reba. So on her um, rider, she gets, like, a whole bottle of Crown, um, but she only takes, I think, one or two shots, but she sips it. And so there's days like if I if I feel like flummy or like I just need something just to help my throat like I, that's the only hard liquor I think I at this point that I really drink because I will just sip like Makers which isn't the best but it's like usually they have it um, but it I mean it just loosens you up but it's not again the best for you afterwards but like yeah. if you got to get through it's some sometimes it's the only way to go but so there's advice. a little 
Yeah. Mark and I aren't even singers. Dude, we aren't even singers. It must be must be why I sound so good right now. You don't want to sing for her, Mark. You'll she'll like. Oh no! It's just lost it's, internet connection. My my vocal cords sound a little bit better today because we went out and had a, a, a little uh, little taste. So, so. I, I do know where I was going. My okay. mind just came back. Um, if someone wants to find like all the information on you, how do they mm-hmm. download your mu- wonderful music? You have a whole array of swag, which I'm not letting. I get, I have four teenage daughters, and I'm not going to turn them onto your site. And the only reason is. There's so much cool stuff on there. They'll want like, you know, one of everything. But how do our listeners, you know, get your swag and find out where you're going to be playing and download your music? Of course. Thank you for saying that. Um, MorganMilesLive.com. M-Y-L-E-S. All my socials are at MorganMilesLive. I'm on your favorite DSP, your favorite streaming service so if you're a spotify listener you're an apple listener etc i'm on there so um you'll see my debut album i dropped right before the pandemic january 2020 but that album still means so much to me it's called therapy i wrote every song um last year i actually released a song that's super about like the scenario and everything called woman of my word and I'm really proud of it. And that's out too. So yeah, please go listen to the music. It means the world to any artist just to hear your thoughts and taking the time. Yeah. I actually bought your therapy album and you sent me a autographed <laughs> poster Ooh, in with it. So thank I, you I, for buying it. <laughs> anytime. I love to support uh, people that deserve to be supported. And you definitely are an incredible uh, musician, an incredible, inspiring woman. And I have to tell you, Whiskey Dreaming is one of my, I, I love the song. Uh, I, we also well, I love, wrote that about a douchebag, so. <laughs> Good for you. We love that. Uh, they're out there. Yeah. They're out there. I, I think they should oh, get yeah. what they deserve, but maybe not a song, you know, it, unless it really gives them a good kick in the. Yeah, I don't think that guy ever really figured out it was about him, which <laughs> I could care less at yeah. this point, but it was just, yeah. So be, besides playing music. What do you like to do? I, I see something that you post on your on your site all the time. You're an avid and actually damn good water skier. Oh, yes. I, I've been water skiing since I was two. We, I come from a long line of water skiers. Really? And I live on a lake um, in Old Hickory Lake in Tennessee. And um, my dad and my mom, I mean, my grandmother skied until she was 85 slalom, like on one. Not oh 85, God. sorry, 80. She's 85 now. Um, but she she's just so cool. And I've got, like, we just enjoy it. Getting up early, hitting the water. We love being on the water. I love, yeah. like, we just got back from a pontoon ride and just hanging out with my dog. I like being outside. I just love, you know, hiking. And that's, I mean, just, and I love um, doing just self self like help kind of stuff like i love like working out and i love you know going and doing things that like (laughs) that's all like interesting stuff of like trying good things just anything that makes you feel good from the inside out i'm like sign me up that's cool and it seems like you have a wonderful family that that is like your biggest fans they your your mom and dad are like always right there with you I absolutely feel so blessed. We definitely have a special bond that I think I wish every kid had. I just love if I have the time, I I just want to be around mom and dad. Like I just absolutely enjoy their company. And if anybody understands on every single level of what I've been through, it's them. And in a world where it's hard to trust a lot of people, they are it, you know, and They've picked me up so many times and they're just my rocks. And I, I just don't know what I would do without them immediately when they came out for friends and family for the blinds. I mean, like I'm teary, you know, it's like, gosh, Maureen, you're a grown woman, like (laughs) get it together. But I think what you just feel that emotion of like, you know, like we're talking about, wow you when when the show starts asking you questions about all this time all this like you just it starts to like get in your chest of like damn <laughs> shit right 
<laughs> and we're crying, you know, it's yeah. like, oh yeah, well, God. you were extremely emotional, you know, at the uh, four chair turn. You could see it right I in mean, your I face. I mean, I cried more than that. So, like, uh, <laughs> that's only what it. we saw, what the world saw. Like, wait till you see me ugly cry, okay? Uh, <laughs> so, only what, nine million people saw you cry? Is that? <laughs> I mean, that that was like my, a cuter cry for me. I was like, wait till they, because I know I was ugly crying at some point. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, th- those videos. I don't know when that's going to pop back up. <laughs> those videos are going to haunt you, they're going to pop up somewhere. Oh, no, I can't won't. even imagine, like, say this Christmas with my cousins that love to make fun of me. This is going to be bad. Like, my face, my ugly cry might end up on a mug or a T-shirt <laughs> or <laughs> pajamas somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> the gift that keeps giving. Mm-hmm. The, mm-hmm. Mo- the Morgan Miles ugly cry mug. Looking back. Looking back to you, <laughs> sometimes you just don't know what he's going to say. Uh, looking back over the over the course of your career, do you have memories of the first time you went up on stage and what that felt like for you? Oh my gosh, it was so long ago. But um, I think the very first time I had a solo was kindergarten. I had like the end of the <laughs> show song, which I think was like the only long solo. So and then. There's video of it. It's super cute. Um, it's called You Can't Buy Friendship. And I, I, you know what? I look back and I was like, wow, what a great song. It was like, you can't buy friendship. You can't buy love. It's a gift from above. And if you're lucky and if you're true, then maybe love will come to you. And it was like, it's so simple, but what a great lesson that like, I just don't feel like people adhere to. And I'm like, it's the simplicity of those types of songs that like set the precedence of what, honestly, I hope to instill in people looking back. (laughs) Oh, you guys. Look look what it did for us. You you set the mood. (laughs) Uh, That's a cute story. That was the first time. That's incredible. That's a cute story. But there's so many moments that I remember um, just being so freaking scared and you know, like, oh, I'm just not prepared, or like the first time, like like I sang the anthem on the scale of NFL was at Gillette Stadium, and I, I mean, whoo, there is my, I have behind the scenes, and my face is like, oh, I mean, it's like just stoic, <laughs> and like so much is going on, and I'm like, they're like, I have earplugs in. I don't even have in-ears and the delay is bad. So I'm like, I'm going to royally mess this up. And then they're like, oh, and there's going to be fireworks when you see rock- rockets. And he's like walking me up and I'm like, Ooh, I can't <laughs> breathe. Like every time I sing the anthem though, it's it's nerve wracking. You just don't want to mess it up. <laughs> and, and, and for us non-musicians, right? No, you, we wouldn't know what that feels like. But when you're in front of a crowd, I, describe that. How what, what the difference is? Because you're trying to keep cadence with something that can you hear? How's it playing out in your head um, as, as an artist? What's crazy about, like, our lives is, like, you never know what you're showing up to. You don't – every venue is different. Every crowd is different. The energy yeah. could be different. Um, and so the biggest thing that you can do as an artist is try to – when you can really – read a room and but be okay with like the situation i feel like what's definitely worse is when not a lot of people are there that's so truly writing like the magic with three people total just because it's good to have you know a couple minds and perspectives and you know you just get comfortable like honestly like i love my co-writers and their friends their family and it's, again, it's like sitting there in a freaking th- therapy session and and writing it out. I think it's just so it's just so healthy. And then to share that gift of being vulnerable with other people so that they don't feel alone, that you know, oh, other people go through this. Okay. Like maybe I can start talking about it. Maybe it's empowering to, you know, reach out to somebody about this and start talking about it if she did. You know, like, I think that's where, that's our job. That's our responsibility that we got this gift to do that. Like, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Right. It's pretty crazy how powerful music is. Like, I've heard songs personally, and I can feel every hair in my arm stand up, or something touches you, or 
reminds you of a, a family member or a, a tragedy that someone went through. So it's really in- incredible that you're able to portray that through music and touch so many mm-hmm. people. I mean, Mark and I have been down to Nashville a bunch of times, the Bluebird Cafe, and we're just looking around at these small, intimate, you know, crowds. The, some of the people are crying or, you know, touching the other person's back, knowing, you know, there's something to the song that's touching them. So thank you mm-hmm. for what you do delivering these messages to everyone all over the world. Well, thank you. And I mean, again, it's like, thank you for giving me this um, ability. But I mean, I'm, I'm like the same person. I'm, I'm always a fan sitting in those crowds going, wow, man, I wish I had written that. And I get the chills and everything. So, you know, I'm, I'm right there with you. <laughs> yeah, stay, stay strong, stay humble. I mean, you're a really inspirational person. And I mean, I like to joke oh. with people and say, oh, you've really made it now. You're, you know, on Musicians and Beyond with Mark Lawhorn and John Sarid. <laughs> but no, for real, like you really have have come to a place in your life that that rocket ship is about to take off. And hang on tight. Either way, I know it's all in God's hands. And, you know, I already feel like, a lot of great things have come out of this and I just feel blessed that I even got to audition and it's been really rewarding because I've been asking a lot like you know is this what I'm supposed to be doing like why has it been such a struggle and man he dropped a lot into my lap in the last you know couple weeks and he's like don't give up and that's all I needed I just needed a little bit of like reassurance and so This has definitely given me a little bit more in my backbone that was definitely um, shrinking. (laughs) Well, we're we're glad to see you standing tall again and and, and riding this wave because you deserve to be on it. You know, we like to give a little shout out to uh, Jim over at Boots and Whiskey Podcast. We love that show. Yep, we love that show. We heard you on on his last episode. And Mm -hmm. one of the things that we hope that this does is exposes you to a new audience and, and a few more people that might not be, you know, paying attention to the mainstream stuff as well. And Jim turned me on to Joe Peters, who is a California Bakersfield product, uh, playing around all, all over the place. Incredible artist, incredible music. So I'm hoping that's what this can do, is just take take the show yeah. and introduce on a new platform, new new musicians, new people. And you obviously, you're on your way. You're about to really, uh, I think, uh, by the end of this season, we're going to see something really, really big from you. And uh it's well, exciting. We're rooting for her, for sure. And, and I think, oh. don't you have a yes. um, a contest coming up that our listeners should know about, the uh, Miles launch Across party. America? Yeah, the launch party. Yeah, I thought I would put together this friendly competition because I really have played, I think, almost every state. Uh, oh, by the way, the Brussels sprouts yeah. that you made the other day. Great, great video. Thank you for showing me that. But uh, I just had to throw that in there because I was thinking across your Instagram and, and, and seeing you the other night with, with the fellow competitors on, on yours talking about miles across America. Um, tell us about that and what you hope to get out of it or what you want the audience to, to share in. Yeah, you guys do need to follow my Instagram so that I can give you some good Chef Morgan recipes. Okay. <laughs> you I use lemon and everything. Now. A little lemon and everything. I know, a little, yes. Yeah. Oh. I mean, that that's fine. Oh, yeah. I, I, Mark and I were talking about putting together, because we do have, you know, 23 countries that listen to us. We were, real, like, for real, thinking of putting together a party and inviting everybody. When I say everybody, everybody's invited and we're going to have a watch party have a watch party um if you want to enter the watch party um basically this will go until we want to see how excited you are like and get be creative or whatever but you know tag me or just that way i can know it's happening and then um you might end up on mbc which is fun um Whoever I think has the best watch party at the end of this thing, um, I will come and play a free concert at your house. Wow. Mark, we're gonna ha- we are going to have to win this. I, I, I mean, Mark. And I have to say this. I might make it multiple house stops because I want to say I just want everyone to know that it matters to me the most of my milestones and how 
much the support is what keeps me going. So if I'm on the road and, you know, the routing makes sense and it's more of like a Monday or Tuesday when concerts don't typically happen, let's stop and let's, let's just have a cool grill out and I'll play like for y'all and you can hopefully my bands with me or something like that. But that is uh, what's up for stakes. So I just want to see y'all get involved. Let's get excited. And hopefully yeah. if I make it to the lives, y'all start voting. And um, that's when I, you know, I'm really going to need you if I make it there. Uh, fingers crossed. Yeah. But I wanted everybody to have fun. I want yeah. everybody, I just want to see what's going on. So well, we yeah. are rooting for, uh, we are rooting for you. Absolutely. Thank you. And we, we can't wait to see your journey. We're going to be sitting back watching what's going on. The entire way. And we can't thank you enough for coming on. We want to remind our uh, listeners that if you want to find out about Morgan, uh, MorganMilesLive.com, and it's Miles, M-Y-L-E-S, Live.com. Um, you can download any of her music. You can buy CDs. You can buy all kinds of swag, koozies, buy streamer songs, streamer music, everything. follower Make sure you're paying attention and, to what this young lady and does here. All of our listeners, this is a formal invite. You are all personally invited to our watch party to see Morgan Miles. Hey, let me ask Thank you. Thank you so much. Morgan, do you have a charity that you like to work with? Um, is there any charities that, that you, you put your heart out there for and your name on? Um, it used to be ALS Tennessee um, because I nannied for a woman that passed away of ALS. Um, and I became pretty much like a mother like figure to her two kids for about a solid eight years. Um, they're doing really well now cats and cats in college and will is now in high school. So they're, they're doing well. Um, but that was, I was pretty heavily involved in that because while she was dying, we, we really needed a lot of their support. Um, so that's a big one. And also um, my cousin who passed away of cancer, glioblastoma, he was um, in a lot of trials for at Dana-Farber. And there's um, there's actually a charity under Mac's name, Mac DeClue mm -hmm. at Dana-Farber. I'll give you guys a link that maybe you can link it Absolutely. in there. Yep. And Absolutely. all that money in, in his honor continues to go to research for Glio. So that's probably my biggest one at this point. Excellent. Wow. Yeah. And you've done some um, make a wish work in the, in the past with a local jewelry company, the lakes region bracelet. Um, yes. So um, I know that Diana. I love them. I also do a lot with like musicians on call. Yes. Um, where we go to the bedsides of patients and saying that's also just super rewarding. I do <laughs> human hug project, which is um, you go to the VA and you hug a lot of veterans and help with PTSD. I also do things called Soul Un Souls United here in Nashville, which I'm doing the, even this Sunday where we feed the homeless. And I just, I really love just getting involved. I mean, again, any way that I can use my voice to help heal, that's just, again, I feel like that's why I have this gift. So the more I can give back, the the more I feel like, okay, I'm not abusing this gift. <laughs> right, right, well, keep on doing what you're doing. I mean, like I said, we are watching your journey. We're ready to party and see what happens with you. And, you know, we're going to try to help all these um, funds that you mentioned, you know, see if we can raise some funds and help some people oh, out. you're so sweet. So thank again, you so much. Yeah, no, I thank really you. for you guys. Thank you for your time coming on. Mark said he's going to send you a bill because we had to rush down the whiskey. Uh, so he needs your address for the bill. Uh, no, just kidding. But seriously, thank you for your time. Best of luck. We are like super honored. We've had so many good guests here, Mark. I yeah, mean, Congratulations on the success you've had so far and, 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 and getting to where you are. And um, I'm so happy that you took a chance on The Voice. And, and I think it is going to finally give you that notoriety and that, that platform that, that puts you at the level you deserve. And so we're look, really, really looking forward to it. Yeah, Mark, I think we got a new friend here. I think we do. Yeah. And, and, and <laughs> hey, we, you got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. But I appreciate you saying that. I yeah. really do. Well, continue to follow the Voice on NBC or streaming on Peacock. It airs Mondays and Tuesdays, 8, 7 Central. And the battles start October 11th. So um, be sure to tune in. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> we wouldn't miss it for the world. Again, ladies and gentlemen, this is Morgan Miles. Morgan, thank you for coming into the yeah, studio with us you. today. Thank you for being on air, and thank you for being our friend. Thank you for being our friend, Mark. Love you guys. Cheers.